something pretty cool happened. October 12th through 15th was a thing in London called EGX and I got to go. I was invited to go as part of Sea of Thieves, did a meet and greet, it was pretty awesome and cool stuff. But that's not the cool bit. They had got together a panel of some of these old school developers from Rare who made Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong, GoldenEye and other things and I got to meet them. I grew up with Nintendo, had a Game Boy, loved that to pieces as a Super Nintendo. It was only when I got to the Nintendo 64 that I was kind of old enough to really feel that sense of this is mine. This is mine, I love it! And games like GoldenEye, like Banjo-Kazooie, like Donkey Kong 64, they were huge and a major part of my growing up. I can't even begin to think how many hours I sunk into those games. Back in the 90s, games weren't releasing every single week and you typically only got a handful of games a year. One for your birthday, one for Christmas, save up your pocket money, you might get another one. That's kind of why Blockbuster Video was so good because you'd go there at the weekend and rent one. Point being is, we played the crap out of these games. Well, when I saw that these old school developers from Rare were going to be there, I just had to meet them. So I got into the panel and I'm sat in the front row and out there come on stage and they're telling these really cool stories. She so got Steve Males. He was the lead artist for Banjo-Kazooie and he is the father of Banjo-Kazooie. He's the guy that actually made what he looks like. Another guy there was Chris Sutherland. He's a programmer from Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong. More importantly, he was the voice actor of Banjo, Kazooie and Clanker from Banjo Kazooie, and from Donkey Kong, he played Diddy Kong, Lanky Kong, Chunky Kong, King K. Rule, and Crusher. Yeah! Another guy was called Ed Bryan. I think, it's, I think that's his name. Ed was there. I believe he was a fellow artist, coder, level designer. Him being there was completely unexpected, so that was a bonus. And Grant Kirkhope was there. He's a very special person. Grant was the co-composer for the soundtrack for 007, and he did the soundtrack for Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong 64. Most importantly, the DK rap. He was also the voice actor for Donkey Kong, Croc, and in Banjo-Kazooie, he was Mumbo Jumbo, Jinjo's, Gruntling's, Mansion Pots, and the mighty Gingenator. I don't remember what that is. So I'm sat in the front row and they're coming out and they they'd give their talk and it was so interesting to hear from them. They are old school developers. Nintendo 64, peak 90s, the beginning of like the 3D technology, blah, blah, blah happening. And these are legends in video game history. They truly, truly are. I felt so very special and lucky to be sat in their presence, hearing their stories. And oh boy, they had some cool stories, right? So they are at E3 or somewhere with Nintendo and they're going to be announcing Banjo-Kazooie. Nintendo legend Shigeru Miyamoto is there. Very cool. He knows a little bit of English. Grant knew a little bit of Japanese. So he kind of had a little conversation with him. He's like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm on the Banjo-Kazooie team doing the music. It's going to be a fantastic game. You're going to love this. You know, have a lovely, lovely kind of back and forth. And then the way they go on their separate ways. Prior to this, Grant, and the fellow devs over at Rare, they're a bit of pranksters. One thing they really enjoy doing, pulling each other's pants down. No matter what they were doing around the office, one would sneak up and then try and yank down the pants of the other one. So much so that they started wearing belts extra tight to try to stop it happening. So with that in mind, back to E3. So Grant has had a couple of drinks, he's a bit tipsy at this point, and he goes off to the bathroom and pow, he sees one of his buddies in there and he's having a pee. George Andreas, who was one of the other one of the designers of Magic Zoo, was having a pee in the thing. So I was behind him trying to pull his trousers down from behind. I was on my knees actually going, get his trousers down, go on, go on, like this. And George just kind of had one hand on his trousers and one hand on his private parts having a pee. And just as I was doing that, I looked up and Mr. Miyamoto was still right there. And I kind of went, oh, oh, hi. And I just thought, and he just looked to us all went like that and thought, oh, Jesus Christ, you know. So that was it. And I haven't, I haven't seen him since, so I'm hoping he doesn't remember it too closely. And, so, and here he is tonight. <laughs> and here he is. He says he never got invited to any kind of meet and greets with him since then. So, who knows? But that's a fun story. <laughs> I had a SOP panel happening right afterwards, and I have my own meet and greet happening after that. So the opportunity to meet these guys was very minimal, very small, very slim. So as the panel started to wrap up, and they're like, one more question and we gotta go. And I was like, oh, packing my shit up, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm good to go. And then it happens, like, thank you for coming, goodbye, woo! And I'm like, you know, I'm a big boy. So I don't run for the exit, I kind of waddle at haste. Like, <laughs> 
So I waddle out of the door and immediately outside the door is the meet and greet section and I get straight into line there. I'm like third or fourth in line and they come out and they, they come to the meet and greet section and take a seat and I glance behind me and already the line is like worming around the corner. It's getting really big and one of the attendants there is like, okay, please line up everybody. We've only got limited time here for meet and greets. So I felt super lucky that I got to the front of this line. As you may or may not know, I'm something of a Nintendo 64 collector. I'm trying to get a full POW UK collection. I currently have 126 games in box of 244. So I'm over halfway mark. It's getting difficult. But I brought some games with me with the pure intent of getting them signed by these legendary devs. And it happened. I am so happy. Boom. Bunch of games right here. There was a kid in front of me and he also pulled out just the one game and I thought, ah, oh, one game? That, that's cute. Yes, yeah, that's cute. Yes, yes, yes. Ideally, I wanted him to sign the boxes, the manuals, the, the, the cartridge inside, but seeing as it was a long line and there was only a limited time, I didn't want to take the biscuit as it were. I just wanted to kind of just get the boxes signed. So Grant got him to sign my golden eye. That's in a box protector, so it's a little shiny. But it's the, the box is in really good condition. What then became was a conveyor belt because the four of them were sat in a line and I kind of gave them the pen, gave them the boxes and down the line they went. Donkey Kong, look at that, I'm super happy. Now the box has got a bit of a ding just up here. I dropped it on the day before as I was putting it in a box protector and gave it a little bit of a crack there. Very annoyed at myself for that, but otherwise this box is super clean. And then last but by no means least, because it was the 25th anniversary of Banjo-Kazooie. This was the main one, getting this bad boy signed. All four of them, once again, getting that signed is super clean and in super good condition. I was so happy to get them signed. They are now part of my collection. They were on display. I'm never going to sell these. I don't want to ever sell any of my collection. It's a term I recently learned. They're, they're now my grails. These are the grails of my collection. As a true collector, I didn't want to kind of deface or damage my boxes. So, hang on, hang on. So, I actually bought extras. So, I have... It's shiny. I've got a box here that's totally clean. And I got, yeah, this one signed. So I have one clean and one signed. And I got it yet again here, not signed. So I have one of each kind. As a collector, I wanted to have a clean version. But this other versions of the signatures are kind of personal pieces. Personal pieces, not necessarily a part of the core collection, but a personal piece nonetheless. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that kind of story with you, that experience and share my happiness with you. So a little bit of a vlog, nothing too much happening here. I hope you enjoyed this, hope you guys seeing that. I haven't really shared much with my N64 collection. We've done some streaming on Twitch a long time ago now. I should really do more. I should do more with it. Maybe start a retro channel up. Anyway, have yourself an amazing day. I love your faces. Goodbye, everybody.